This is Pete Moore on Halo Talks NYC on location, Miami Beach, Ursa 2022. I have the pleasure of finally welcoming to the show, after trying to coordinate with the agents representing Swerve, we have Eric Posner here, one of the co-founders and part of the great Swerve pivot we're going to talk about today. So welcome finally to Halo Talks. Pete, thanks for having me. Awesome. So why don't you talk about originally what you guys were doing with Swerve, how that was picking up before COVID, some of the iterations or modifications you made that kind of made a team training and, and how it, you know, differentiated from some of the other competitors. And then we'll talk about, you know, what happened during COVID. Sure. So the way that's, uh, so we launched Swerve back in 2013. And the idea came from the fact that my co-founders and I were all working in finance. We were in sales jobs and we were taking our clients to boutique fitness classes. And what started off as taking one or two clients every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m., it grew to a group of 20 of us every single week. And it just really helped us advance in our careers. And what we recognize is that none of the boutiques out there were truly capturing that camaraderie of going with the group. So we came up with the idea for Swerve, which was the world's first team-inspired indoor cycling studio. We pitched our clients on this idea and they said, look, we love it, but you gotta quit your job. You gotta put up your own money and then we'll back you. So that's what we did. We quit our jobs, we put up our life savings and they helped us raise the rest of the money to open up our first location in Flatiron. So fast forward, we had three locations in the city. We had a, a pop-up out in Montauk and things were going quite well. And then the pandemic hit. Well, that'll probably change your strategic uh, view on the world. So from a standpoint, <laughs> you know, and you and I talk, you know, extensively at that time, you know, what do you do? Obviously some studio just said, all right, let me just take my PPP money, you know, put it under a mattress, try to keep my landlord from calling me weekly. And, um, you know, in a couple of months I'll, I'll reopen. Um, you guys obviously kind of, you know, thought at that point, it's like, okay, now it's time for us to like have time to think and whiteboard out what do we do next and how do we not go dormant mm -hmm. for this period of time. So talk about, you know, some of the ideas, if you will, about, you know, some of the different options that you could have taken mm -hmm. and where you kind of settled on. Yeah, you know, so bef even before the pandemic hit, what we recognized is that there was this bigger opportunity at play and, and we saw how difficult and expensive it was to open up brick and mortar studios and there's this dynamic where the, the, the full membership gym and the boutiques were really kind of going at it. And we thought this could be a really great opportunity for partnership for Swerve because you know, we're focused on indoor cycling and that's it. And the psychology behind it, the gamification, the technology, all, th that's it. Whereas gyms have so many different components. So we recognize, you know, could we power cycling studios within big box gyms? And so we started talking to a lot of the major chains here in the US, but so as a, as a way for us to scale. So that, became, that really was the vision even before the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. But then once that happened, the way in which we are now delivering our concept and our experience alongside of big box gyms is very different than, than that initial vision. So how do you think, you know, people going into their homes and doing online classes and having a Peloton or having a, a soul cycle bike at the time. How did that kind of advance and further the thinking of the host, you know, whether it's a crunch or one of your other clients, we'll talk about some of your new ones, um, to say like, okay, I'm fine with this now because the, the, the member has already been indoctrinated into this without me being like the leader to say, hey, I'm not gonna provide you an instructor live you know, they'll be like, okay, that's fine. Like I've already been doing this at home. Like that's fine. I, there's a good experience here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so first uh, what I would say is that everybody was stuck at home for a year plus working out behind a screen. So whether it was a Peloton or an iPhone or a tablet, everybody was, that's how they were consuming fitness. And what we recognize and going back to you know, this moment in time, really we call it the great reflection for us yeah. because we had to think about what did we do well, where did we fall short, and also in how can we now create for the future consumer. And given everybody was working out at home behind the screen, we thought, hmm, well, would you rather do that alone or do that with the energy and the camaraderie and the community around you? And we just started talking to our riders and to really tapped everybody for advice. We tapped you for advice. We tapped, you know, just running this idea to, to see what people thought. And then we went to Crunch and we said, hey, 
here's the idea. We, we've converted, so we've shut down our studios except for one of them in Flatiron that we've converted into a production studio. What if we live stream our experience into your cycling studio that already exists, we put up a large video wall at the front of the room, and then our technology can pull the data off of any bike out there. So we are equipment agnostic. Okay. So we pull the data off the bikes, and then we gamify this experience as such that your studio is a team, and you're competing against all the other studios on the platform. And they said, we like the idea, let's give it a go. Is that on an hourly basis? Like if I'm doing a crunch class, we're swerving it that I'm competing against a another crunch and it's live, it's not on demand. All live. Wow, okay, that's so, really interesting. So yeah. one thing I didn't mention about how we ended up here, uh, we were put in touch with a woman by the name of Marion Roman, who would also be great for this podcast. Okay. Um, she is a pioneer in the fitness industry. She was on the co-founding team at Peloton, but before that she owned studios in New York City, sold them to Flywheel, and then, and then went to Peloton. Um, we started talking to her about this idea and now she's on full time. Oh, as I a, met as, her. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so, so she is an absolute yeah. rock star. Helped us. Helped us with this pivot. But one key decision that we made early on that she was very adamant about was making this so that it's live. Yeah. Everything has to be live because if we do it on demand, it's not going to have that same immersion, uh, immersion and immersiveness, and that if you you're doing it on demand. So that's something that now, um, you know, we're doing about seven live classes per day but that schedule will be doubling within the next month. And everything's being done out of your studio. Correct. And are you using um, only your own instructors? Correct. Okay. So as Crunch has asked you as an example, like, hey, we want to have some of our instructors in there, or you know, have you thought about over time, do people um, or do companies say, hey, look, I love what you're doing for me. Let me do some of my own live classes or Part, I think the biggest part, or one of the biggest parts of our value proposition for our gym customers is that we are hiring the best of the best cycling instructors in the world. And so they are guaranteed that they're getting an elite trainer with every single class. And actually with Crunch, what they are doing, so we're not going into gyms and saying, hey, fire all your people, right? We are solving a key uh, we, we are a solution for them in that there are extreme labor shortages and they're having trouble hiring talent. But if you have great instructors, keep them. That's, that's, that's right. awesome. They can hold classes there still, but let's do a hybrid where you keep that great instructor on and we'll fill out the rest of your schedule so that you have a class on the hour every hour. So are you um, purposely not putting live classes on prime time? Oh, oh no, we are. do, we do. So the gym but partner, they, decide if they, they wanna, can decide if they want to stream exactly. it in. Okay, So, you know, if, if we'll, we'll have a class on the hour every hour, but if the gym says our instructor is going to be teaching at eight, no problem. Gotcha. And you're piping in the music as well? Correct. Okay, so you're responsible technically for the music licensing or they just have a regular music license of BMI or whatever they have, ASCAP, and that it's, basically it's, covers it's, everything it's, you're It's doing. double protection. As long as you're not... Uh, archiving the class. Correct. All right, and you're not archiving them? So we are, um, okay. although we haven't figured out yet exactly how we want to repurpose it. We have a handful of ideas on how we could, and then that is, that's in the works. Gotcha. Yeah, one of the things that was funny just for our audience to know about is that when Peloton went public, that's when they actually uh, paid their penalty to all of the music licensing um, lawsuits that they had. Mm -hmm. So the public who bought that stock basically paid for their past uh, breakage on what they were supposed to be paying, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a prior to being a public company. Yeah, and, and what's exciting now is that uh, because of that, there are a lot of really great solutions out there for companies to, to be fully protected. So fortunately, it's not an issue. Is that like uh, Feed FM? That is, that's one do? of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. gotcha. So, you know, as, as you kind of look at this great pivot or this great reflection. Talk about what people on the team that you brought on, you know, talk about the woman that you brought on from Peloton. Talk about how like you and your team and co-founders kind of had to change your lens mm -hmm. on like, what, what does the world look like post COVID? And do I want to be in the studio business? Mm -hmm. Or is this like the time where I kind of, you know, jump off? And then also talk about, as a third part of it, you know, how do you talk to your investors and say, hey, look, I know you invested in the studio business, however, like, this is what I'm doing, and this is 
Yep. Why? And stick with me. Mm -hmm. um, so this was probably the greatest lesson in leadership ever, right? Yeah. Being faced with a pandemic and, and how to manage through that. And so for uh, JH, my co-founder and I, it really forced us to, to think differently and to have to wake up every morning and um, just keep, keep pushing, right? Uh, but what we did is we, we really leaned on our team. And it, this, this solution did not come from the founders. It came from everybody on the team coming to us with ideas, pitching ideas, and going back to us then going out uh, to our community and to our investors and really enrolling them to then come up with and, and learning, getting, allowing G gym chains to poke holes in what we're, in how we're thinking. Um, and, and that is ultimately what got us to where we are now. And, and then, but then going back to, to our investors, they were so impressed with the fact that we were able to come out of this in a position that is arguably way stronger than ever before, right? right. We, we converted from a brick and mortar boutique fitness studio. We're now a B2B content and software company. And with the opportunity to, 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 to have margins of a SaaS company and to, to scale way, way faster with less cost, with less overhead, we have the ability now where we've consolidated our our business into our, we have our production studio and then we have our corporate team that's supporting our growth. But we no longer have to think about the real estate and think right. about all these other components that go into managing a brick and mortar business. So let me ask you a question. So, you know, obviously I got this book, Time to Win Again, talking about team sports and, and teams and what position people are in. And, you know, we talk about, you know, like your corporate overheads, kind of your defense and you know your strikers in soccer are basically like your goal scorers or your salespeople or your your group x instructors or your forward facing you know personal trainers so on and so forth how did your team and your your you know your partner as well as the the new woman from from peloton coming on and some of your other people how did you kind of reshuffle the deck if you will and say like Okay, poster, like this is what you did before and this is what your title is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously everyone's kind of doing everything in a startup in an early stage company, but how did you kind of say, okay, this is the new business model and this is what everyone's responsible for? Mm -hmm. Or has it kind of just like naturally evolved? This was a, a key learning of, you know, you may have the right player on the team, but recognizing are they in the right position? Right, exactly. And leaning into their strengths. And, and so that, that reshuffling or restructuring was very much alongside of this pivot. For instance, uh, Jenna Arndt, she was a, a top instructor with us with Swerve 1.0. And during this pivot, she was incredibly creative with the ideas and just everything that she was pitching, putting in front of us, which is like, this is amazing. And so that, evolved into now she heads up fitness programming for us as our head instructor and that that was her opportunity to shine and so um yeah it was basically we uncovered even more strengths from our team during that during that time period in addition to placing people where they should be and where they will shine so you know looking at it as a you know you're a b2b provider so you're not getting the revenue directly from the member where you did as a studio and you can kind of say, you know, from a fitness instructor standpoint or a celebrity standpoint, you know, this is how much you get as a percentage of the class or back into like what the percentage is. So, you know, for our listeners, you know, a soul cycle instructor make, might make 300,000 to 500,000 a year, which might sound crazy to people like, wow, you can pay them that much. But it's like, you know what? They're basically a, a, an artist and, it's like, uh, you know, uh, you know, Kelly Clarkson, if you will, like coming into a studio three days a week doing 25 concerts a week. Mm -hmm. You know, she should get 20 percent of the revenue. Right. Because they're coming to see her. Um, and a lot of these studios, I think, if you argue about SoulCycle, you know, is SoulCycle a talent management business or is SoulCycle kind of Madison Square Garden? Like I got an awesome arena. I got a great sound system. Uh, I'm going to promote your act. And um you're an employee, but at the same time, you know, your, your compensation is, you know, has a floor, but it's based on, you know, performance. Mm -hmm. So how do you think about it from, you know, a B2B standpoint? How do you compensate people? Is there like a new normal on, you know, I can't pay you 
as if we're a B2C company because I'm not generating that revenue indirectly as a live nation would. At the same time, you know, you're gonna stay in one studio. You're not gonna have to travel around the city. You're gonna be an employee. You're gonna get benefits. Um, how, do, how do you think about that? I mean, you hit the nail on the head there in terms of lifestyle for them and being able to teach fewer classes, not having to run around yeah. um, and being able to focus on one thing. And that, that really helps them live a more comfortable life, right? Um, but with that, because we can have a small team and invest in them and help them grow, but we, we also offer them equity. So that is something that really helps uh, with, w helps with uh, recruiting. But it also allowed us to reset the culture. And I think the world has changed so much over the past, over the past couple years. And now we are able to build something completely new. And so we did, we went and tapped from the best of the best businesses out there from, from where we hired these instructors and we put them in a room and we said, hey, here's the opportunity with this new business model. We're solving so many issues right. for gyms, but also think about it, you know, we're eventually gonna, gonna be streaming into thousands of gyms and you multiply that by 20 people in each room, that's a lot of eyeballs. Right. So these trainers are now getting in front of thousands to millions of people and that helps grow their brand as well. Sure, sure. You know, one of the interesting things that I was talking about, I think it was interesting because I was talking about it, but no one gave me feedback on it. I'm pretty sure it was interesting. But I was talking to a group and I said to them, you know, if you have a group exercise schedule and you don't charge for those classes uh, and it's part of the membership, how do you think you're going to ever afford to get the best instructors? It's kind of not possible in, in the business model that you're running. Because if that person was so awesome, then one, you should charge for it yourself, or two, they would gravitate towards a boutique studio where they can get paid for that. So when you talk about a business model that's solving frustrations, you're basically taking the, you know, the diva or the, you know, the all-star and saying, look, I'm gonna provide you the all-star where you don't have to do that and you're gonna get the numbers in there without the fixed cost. So that, you're, you're spot on. So our unique selling proposition to the gym, right? Number one, we've spoken about where we are giving them the best of the best trainer with every class. Right. Number two, we actually turn that stream on, we turn it off, we manage everything remotely. So for the gym, they don't have to do a thing. It's right. very set it and forget it. And then another piece is the way that we charge them, it, it, it's, it's a cost save for the gym. Okay. So it's not only a cost save, we've proven to drive additional revenues for them. So we're, we're solving a lot of key challenges for them. And, and actually because of the pandemic, because they lost a lot of, due, due to the great resignation and due to these labor shortages, yeah. a lot of them are sitting on cycling studios that where they're only offering maybe one class per day. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's sunk cost. So now that we can fill it up, and the member now has the opportunity to take a class whenever they want because we're doing you know, on the hour, every hour. That's how they're gonna drive members and keep members. And then the last piece to this that I think is really key is that the members are not paying more to take a Swerve class right. at, at, a, at Crunch or at any, at any of our gym partners. It's included in their membership. Uh -huh. So now they can get a boutique level class in, on, and take unlimited classes per month and that's included in your price. So, you're paying thirty dollars a month to be a to be a member at this gym now. You know, previously you're paying thirty four dollars a class right. to go to Swerve. Now you get all the amenities of the gym plus unlimited Swerve is classes. Your, the way you price this to a club is it based? If if I do seven classes a day inside of my studio, do I pay more than one class a day? Currently, it's a it's a flat fee for as many classes as we offer. Gotcha. So ideally. Are you are you taking over or are you as part of your your contract saying like I need you to, to do a certain amount of marketing to your membership base or I'm gonna come out there and we're gonna put somebody in front of the studio for the first like week that we're there to explain how this works or you know how much of it is my point is there's a lot of digital companies out there that forget that I need to actually drop ship someone in there and explain what's going on. Mm -hmm. And if I can if I can control the messaging, I can control how that content is released. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's a great idea. Let's put somebody in the club for a week. Like, obviously you would do that in any other business. Mm -hmm. uh, but some people say, well, I'm only the B2B software provider. That's up to the client. Yep. 
And then some of it's like, well, I sold them the software. It's my responsibility to get people in there. So how do you think about that and the future plans to like have a grand launch of Swerve inside of a crunch? And we'll talk about your next deal and say, look, I'm actually going to be on the ground as if we're doing a grand opening of your club or in a studio inside your club. It's a, it's a really great question. And part of, so we've been operating now for six months and we are very grateful that Crunch gave us that opportunity to learn here and to figure out what we need. And so we've spent these past six months really taking all these learnings and putting and, and putting them into a system that we can now pass off to our gym partner. Um, I was just talking to David about this. Uh, we use Monday.com, right, the project management tool, so that we pass it off to our partner for the onboarding. They're just going down a checklist. And we've provided them with the marketing materials, provided them with the templates, so it's very plug and play. Right. So, But the key there is that we do lean on the gyms to get this in front of their members. And because we cannot reach out to them, right? Yeah. But what we've shown from operating within these first six months is that we actually have a retention rate of 88% on the riders that come. So it's been very strong. They're referring friends and the ridership, it's just, the bookings just continue to rise. Yeah. Um, so it, it is something that is very word of mouth marketing that, that we are able to benefit from. The other part is that this screen, this large screen that we have in the cycling studios they are also playing B-roll when classes are not happening. Right. So at the, at the club level, the managers or whoever is working there can, can tour people in there or people walk by the cycling studio and they see this, you know, this amazing content coming from the screen. So that also helps with marketing. Got it. So we like to have breaking news on uh, uh, Halo Talk. So this will air probably uh, around the time that you got a big announcement. So. Why don't we release it now? We'll do an invisible NDA. I like to do invisible NDA. I do it like that. Uh, I actually make people do that, and I'm fucking going to hold them to it. Um, so tell us what's on tap in New York and um, how that evolved and what people should expect. We're, we're very excited to be announcing, uh, and this is in part, so thank you to you for making this connection, but we are launching with New York buy Sports Buy some Club. books and, as like a <laughs> yeah. quid I did. pro quo. Dude, I did. Buy 20 books <laughs> yeah. from us for the intro. All right, I, I bought one, but up, I need 19 up, more. These books are going to turn into like my Bitcoin currency. <laughs> it's like I did what for you? <laughs> buy 20 books on Amazon. Give me 20 reviews. <laughs> All right, you got it. Um, Not 20 until after you launch, obviously. Well, I already left a review, just so you know. Oh, uh, thanks. It's <laughs> yeah. touching because I don't know about it. But go ahead. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, so tell um, us and and I love the book. Rock. It's very very on brand with Swerve. It's all, all about team sports and everything, exactly. pulling all these positive attributes in, from team sports into business. So you're speaking our language. Awesome. So the, the review was very genuine. All right. Um, but yeah, we, we announced. We'll link to the review up on the show notes. <laughs> Uh, Go so, so, so yes, we got New York Sports Club is launching. New York Sports Club will be launching. The first club will be on uh, 23rd and Park. Awesome. And they've got a they've got a great team. They have uh, a really strong business that we're excited to be a part of their their rebuild, coming out of the pandemic. And uh, yeah, we're we're very excited. That's great. That's great. So we'll uh, we'll cover that uh, on LinkedIn and other sources, and look forward to taking some classes there. Uh, so maybe just you know one business quote or one you know, saying that kind of came up with your team during a great reflection here. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a quote in and of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but any, maybe any parting words here for the audience or the reason to call you guys up and say like the time is now to just get swerve inside of your uh, entity. Thank you. Uh, well, I wish you would have prepared me before this with a quote. Uh, so I could really put some thought into it. You got, well, you, <laughs> but, you got a month. But, we can but, edit one in. <laughs> well, what, what I'd say, and, I, and actually this is a quote that I, I do really love, is uh, the only way out is through. And I think that's something that we learned during the pandemic was that you got to fight through it. And I mean, it's really just in our DNA to keep going and to never give up. And that uh, even one of my mentors said to me early on when we first started Swerve that it takes 10 years to be successful. <laughs> and I think we it, it, it re that really hit close to home because it is all this, the, the swerving and the pivoting that, that it will take for you to really nail it. And we feel very confident now that you know what we're doing is solving a major issue for gyms and but really to the end user providing an incredibly engaging and immersive experience yeah. uh, for the member yeah so you know in, in closing here you know in, in our uh, our speech tonight related to the uh, the happy hour that we have is about thinking of all of your vendors and your partners 
as weapon system providers. And I need weapons to contain and, and keep my membership. I need weapons in order to, to reduce my cost. I need to reduce, I need to have more content. And these are all weapons and we're in a war. So I uh, encourage you to continue to swerve <laughs> and uh, make things happen. Keep your head down, build your business, know that you're solving frustrations and keep optimizing. So good to have you on. I appreciate you, Pete. Thanks, Thank bro. you. All right, good to see you.